Today I want to talk to you about how you can use your fleet carrier to generate a passive income that will hopefully help you pay towards the upkeep or maybe even cut yourself a little profit. Today's video is brought to you by Gameglass. Gameglass allows you to take control of your ship from a tablet or a phone. Not only that, but you also get on-screen information about your ship, your targets and the world around you. So gone are the days where you have no more room for your key bindings or you have to alt tap out of the game to look up market data. On top of that, Gameglass also works with Star Citizens, so follow the link in the video description and try Gameglass for free. If you like it and want more shards and features, you can buy them individually or you can subscribe to Glass Pass. Use offer code DTEA on checkout and get 5% off your first purchase. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Armed Astronomy. So let's talk about money making and especially using fleet carriers for generating money. There are many ways you can use a fleet carrier. Some of them is what I would consider as secondary incomes where you use your fleet carrier to support other activities. That could be using it as a mining platform where you can store materials so you can sell them when the market, market is good or um, maybe you use it for touristing and you ferry people around and you get paid uh, that way. But what we're going to be talking about today is the more direct income you can get from a fleet carrier through trade. Now, if you're going to use your fleet carrier to generate money through trade, you need to make yourself a plan and you need to be conscious about the materials you're trading, where they come from, where's the supply and where's the demand, where you're going to get rid of this material again, so you're not burning in with stock that you cannot get rid of. Now, we've got a little matrix here where we on the one side, we have the supply and the supply can either come from NPCs or from players. And on the other axis, we have demand that can also either be, be selling two uh, NPCs or selling two players. All materials in League will fall into one or more of these boxes. Some will only be in one, and some materials will actually be in all four of these boxes. Now, for instance, we could look at the materials like void opals or low temperature diamonds. These you cannot buy from a station. That means there is no NPC supply. But you can buy them from players, as these materials are often mined by players, so therefore there is a player supply. However, these materials are not consumed by players. Players might want to buy them, but they're only buying them with the, the intent to sell them again for profit. So that's kind of a like just a middleman trade and we're going to ignore that. There is no consumption of these materials by players and therefore there is no, no demand for these materials from players and there's only an NPC demand. So therefore they'll fall in this category down here. If you look at other materials like gold and silver, for instance, while these can also be mined, yes, they are very rarely mined by players because they are relatively low value compared to other materials. Therefore, the supply that you get from players is going to be negligible. However, these materials can be bought off stations. And in similar fashion as with, uh, with low temps and voidables, these are not really consumed gold. Yeah, the modern engineers does need a little bit of gold in order to unlock that people often buy. So technically there is a player demand, but it's again, it's a very small demand. So I'm in, in large sections, I'm going to ignore that here. But there is, of course, an NPC demand. You can sell gold and silver to stations. So that means that gold silver will fall into this box here. And then you have a material like tritium, which is quite special because it's one of the very few materials where there is a significant player demand for it. Of course, because people use it in fuel as the fleet carrier, so it is consumed by fleet carriers. You can also sell to a station, so there's also an NPC demand. You can also buy this stuff from a station, so there's an NPC supply. And players will also go out and mine it, so there's also an a player supply. So, so tritium actually falls into all of the categories here. Next, you need to figure out how you want to do your trade. And there are multiple different ways you can do this. There are, as I said, two different base types of trade that you can do in terms of trade tactics, at least. There is either a distance trade or there is a time trade. A distance trade is where you are planning to flip the materials quickly. So you might buy a small quantity now, get it in as quickly as you can, move the fleet carrier to another station and offload it at that station where you spot a gap in the market where you can buy stuff cheap and sell it high someplace else. That was I would consider a, a distance trade. A time trade is where you have a more deeper understanding of the market. You know what kind of prices will this material go up to and when is the market low. And when the market is low, you buy stuff in, then you sit on the material, you wait for the market to come back up. When the market comes back up, you offload it again at a station with a uh, with a higher price now of course when you are getting materials on and off your carrier you could do it yourself but ferrying thousands and thousands of tons of materials on and off fleet carriers is not really a passive income which is what we're looking for today the downside is then you need to pay for someone else someone else to do it for you 
And the way you can do this is take your fleet carrier and park it right next to a station where something is being sold at a low price. You then set up a buy order on your fleet carrier at a higher price, and thereby you encourage players to go to their station, buy the material, fly it out to your fleet carrier and sell it, and they get a profit for the trouble of flying back and forth. Similarly, of course, it also means when you find a station that has a high buy price where you can get rid of this material again, you need to pay people to offload it again. So you need to set it for sale on your fleet carrier at a lower price than uh, the station is buying for, so people have an incentive to go to your fleet carrier, buy it, fly it into the station, and offload it. So as you can see here, you are actually cutting significantly into your profit by paying people for the transport. But of course, this would be a very passive way of making money. Now, I have one thing I want to ask you before we go and talk about how I would set up trade for passive income. And that is if you would consider to go down and subscribe to the channel. It would really mean a lot to me. Statistics say that two thirds of you watching are not even subscribed. So I would love to get you guys on board if you're interested in more Elite Dangerous videos and guides. So what I recommend you do if you want to make some passive income is... First of all, you need to have an understanding of mining because we are going to be supporting the miners, all the miners that doesn't own a fleet carrier. And we're going to be focusing on high value materials that players would typically collect. So you need to understand where the miners are, where they are going. Miners will have a tendency to go to overlapping hotspots if they're doing laser mining, for instance. Or they might go and do uh, coal mining, but that's a little bit more hard to track. But you need to go and figure out where are the overlapping hotspots. So go out on Reddit. Look, for instance, where have people made mining maps? Those kind of things. Where are the known overlapping hotspots? So let's say you find yourself a good overlapping pay night hotspot and you're expecting a decent activity of, of miners in that area. When the market is low, so you need to keep an eye on the market. When the NPC stations is paying a poor price for the materials, you're going to move your carrier to those mining hotspots and put them in as close to it as can, put something in the name that shows that you are buying that material so people can actually see it on the uh, on the galaxy map. And then you need to, of course, to set up that buy order. And you can actually set up the buy order at the, either the low price the station has because at this point you could even try to set it lower than the stations because you are actually offering people a convenience of not having to fly hundreds of light years to a station to sell. And if you also know that, let's say, the prices can swing by a factor of two, if you pay 10% more than the stations, you still know that you have a 90% gap that you can trade within. You could set up the prices here. You will, of course, have to compete with other fleet carriers in the area. So you need to see what others are offering. And you need, of course, to up them a little bit so you ha do have the best price uh, in the area. And then you just need to sit, wait for people to come move stuff from the rings, fly to your fleet carrier and sell. So now while the market is low, you're going to stock up and you're going to get as much of this material in, whatever material it is, you're going to get as much of it on board your fleet carrier as you can. And then you're going to wait. As I said, we're going to do a time trade here. So we're going to be waiting. We're going to keep an eye on the market. When the market goes up and the prices are high, then you're going to have to go move your fleet carrier to that station that has a good price. And remember, these can change quickly. So there is a little bit of activity here where you might have to jump the fleet carrier around. Because mining materials fluctuate massively in price, there can be a factor of two between when it's low and when it's high. So it could be sometimes twice as high as other times. You have a huge margin to trade within here. And yes, you're going to have to pay people a little bit to ferry it off your carrier. But by trading off a ring instead of a station, people will naturally just want to get rid of this material and get some money out of it. And if they can save half an hour of travel by going to a fleet carrier, then you save yourself the... Basically, you're not paying people to transport on your carrier. That's what I'm trying to say. And again, all this can be handled remotely. You don't necessarily have to be on the carrier, almost. Because in order for people to actually know that the carrier is, is there, you need to make sure that it gets listed in the Elite Dangerous Market Network. This is the data network that is supporting all the third-party tools like Inara, EDDB. If you go to any Elite Dangerous related website and it has market prices that are live updated, then it is connecting to the Elite Dangerous Market Network. So you need to get your carrier in that network. Luckily, that's relatively easy. Most tools like, for instance, I think ED Discovery connects to it. Uh, you have the ED Market Connector. A lot of these third-party tools you install locally, they will connect to this network and they will supply data for it. So if you just want a small lightweight tool just to do this, get the Elite Dangerous Market Connector. 
All it really does is when you dock, it just everything every 30 seconds it then updates the market and put it in the network. And if you're ever in doubt whether you got it listed correctly, go into Inara, go into EDDB and search up and see if you could find your own carrier in there so that people can go and they can find your stuff and they can actually see there are some profit to be made. Again, when you're selling, it's also good to change the name of your carrier. So if, for instance, you have miners that are coming to sell the materials, they might spot your carrier and system. And if they say, hey, I'm selling for 10% um, lower than, than, than station, then they might think, oh, you know what, instead of going mining, I'm just going to do a few trips here and then make, those, uh, make that little profit there. So... Do advertise your carrier through its name. Make sure you get in the market network so people can find it. Try to get it to be as visible as possible. And of course, the closer you can get a parking spot to the stations, the more convenient it is, it easier it is for people to offload it and the higher the chances that people are actually going to spend. If they have to fly 10,000 light seconds in order to get to the station, it might not be as good of a deal and you might have to lower the prices even further to entice people to come out and help you offload. But that's going to be it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. And until next time, I will see you guys in space.